don't like it when scriptures start with, and then, after that, and with that, I don't like that. What's going on? Well, what's happening before the, before the lady who came to ask for help it goes like this. Some Pharisees and teachers of religion, law, now arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. They asked him, why do you disciples disobey our age-old tradition? For they ignore the tradition of ceremonial hand-washing before they eat. Jesus replied, and why do you, by your traditions, violate the direct commandments of God? For instance, God says, honor your father and mother. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of the father and mother must put, be put to death. But you say, it is all right for people to say in, to their parents, sorry, I can't help you. For I have vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. In this way, you say they don't need honor to honor their parents. That's pretty tough words. Jesus was shaking things up a little bit. Jesus was shaking things up a bit with the Pharisees, at the same time teaching the disciples. Jesus says, don't you guys get it? Don't you get it? I am here telling you that you guys are doing what your own man-made laws are and not worshiping God, not, not, not doing things for God in the way that God wants you to do. You're hypocrites. He says, going on in that verse, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Their worship is farce, for, the, for they teach man-made ideas and commandments from God. And then we get into the parable with the lady who wants help, and he says, no, no, you know, it's, I, I'm here for the Israelites. That is one of the weirdest parables, the weirdest stories ever. I, it takes a while to kind of understand it. So here he is saying to the people, saying to the Pharisees, you guys don't get it. You're just doing it your way, not the way you, that God wants you to do it. You're taking what, you're taking what you want to do and putting it before God or putting it before honor your mother and par your mother and father, so forth and so on. And now, with the woman that we just read about in the text, Jesus says, Jesus says that I was sent only to help God's lost sheep, the people of Israel. All right, so here we are. We are a church on the north side of town, so guys, I just want to let you know we're only here to serve the people who go to North High School. Okay? We're only here to serve the families that go to North High School. We don't, we're not here to serve anyone who goes to Memorial or anyone who goes to Regis. Or we're not here to, go, to serve anyone who goes to Chai High. No. Who are we here for? We're here for everybody. We're here for everybody. Let me tell you guys, we have something really exciting going on in this church, and it's, it's, it's the Holy Spirit catching fire. It's it's tangible. You can feel it. It's not just the new pews and the new carpets and the new lights and the re remodeled altar. It's not that. It's things like, if you look on the back of your, your uh, parish news, you'll see the Holy Spirit was with these people when we, we became a platinum sponsor for that walk for the um, uh, Beacon House. Do you know how many people were there? And do you know how great it was to have us have a whole slew of guys, uh, pe ladies and gentlemen, walking? We weren't there just for North High School. We were there for Beacon House. We were there, and the thing about Beacon House that isn't cool is the fact that they focus on homeless children. Families with homeless children. They find homes for, for these people. They get it. We get it. We get it here. We get all sorts of things going on. Jesus was shaking things up. They were hung up in the past. My question is about us. With whom and how do we worship? 
Some people like traditional service, and that's great. Some people prefer more relaxed service and conversational. That's great, too. Is one right and one wrong? No. Martin Luther wrote the um, German Mass in B-flat, and he, he fought against the pressure to do that for a long time. He fought because he did not want to have what happened to the Catholic Church happen to his uh, people that he was serving. That you have to worship a certain way. That you have to have this, and you have to have this. There are tenets within the service that we have to have. We have to have confession and absolution. We have to have um, uh, reading of the word. We have to have our creed. There's, there's all those things. And we have communion every service. There's all those things that are important. But it doesn't matter what falls in between. Because Martin Luther said, if you say that worship has to be a certain way, then what you are worshiping is the style of worship. And it replaces God. If you say it has to be this way. Kind of reminds me what the Pharisees are doing here. And Jesus was shaking things up. We have great things going on in this church. Spirit-driven church. Spirit-driven things. We have kids going to, to camp. We're shaking things up. And Jesus is leading the way. Now, these are our new staff shirts. Okay? We got new staff shirts. Ruth Ann, you, you got, your, your teacher's got them too, right? Yeah, we, we have new staff shirts. I don't have my robe on today. I don't have a clerical collar on today because I'm going to camp. But that, does that mean what I'm doing? I'm going to camp in less than an hour. Does that mean that, that the worship service we're doing is less valid? Does that mean the worship message I'm giving is less valid? No, it does not. Because you all go out and give your testimony and give, spread the good news to people out in the street. Do you guys have a clerical collar on? Do you guys have a robe on? No. Those are important things to the traditions of our church. Those are important things. But as I say all the time, I grew up for 40 years eating lutefisk on Christmas Eve. We just had a family reunion yesterday, and, you know, my two cousins, my three cousins, and they always came to our house for Christmas, and and all had lutefisk. How many of us do you think are having lutefisk anymore? Yeah, Dad, I know. <laughs> we always wanted to have pizza. That's why last year when we had the open house upstairs between services, I said, yes, finally pizza on Christmas Eve. But Jesus was shaking things up. He was saying that what you are doing, who you are worshiping, is more important than how you are worshiping. He was going on to say that through that whole, to the, to that whole scripture. When he got into the, the text with, with the lady and said, oh, no, I'm just here, I'm just here for, for the lost sheep of Israel. Then all of a sudden he says, no, I'm here for the Gentiles too. I'm here for the lost sheep because one day the Israelites will rebel against me. And the Gentiles will become part of my part. You know, the pastor should turn his phone off during, during service. Goodbye. You are the weakest link. Um, but Jesus came. Jesus came for us to follow him. To do what he calls us to do. To do the traditions of, of, of what he wants us to do. It's interesting that he talks about... Um, it's interesting that he talks about the fourth commandment. Honor your mother and your father. When we teach that in confirmation, we teach honor those who are put in, put in position above you. Yes, it's mom and dad, but, but what about the other people? What about the police? What about um, um, doctors and, and, and teachers? I forgot to put the teachers in. Teachers. And, and, and what about those people? 
It's not just do what mom and dad say. It's honor those who are put in charge of you. Just like when we teach... Um, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come um, on. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. What does that mean? What does that mean to a 6th, 7th, and 8th grader? Yeah, they learn it. But what does that mean? It means we teach, protect your neighbor's reputation. Protect your reputation. Do not slander against your neighbor. Do not slander against your neighbor. Why? Because if you tell a lie about Johnny, and all the people get mad at Johnny, and later they find out that, that Johnny didn't do it, they're going to come back and be mad at me. So it is, it, is, it is a way of, I talked about doing, doing old things in new ways. It is a way of making things meaningful to people. And that's what Jesus is saying we're supposed to do. Make things meaningful and, and give glory to God. One of, my favorite, <clears throat> one of my favorite songs of all time is sung by David Phelps. And the name of it is End of the Beginning. And had I thought about it, we would have played it. But he's sitting on a Bible and he's reading a book. He's talking to his neighbor. And he says, it's a bestseller to his neighbor. And he says, oh, I've heard all that before. It's nothing but made up, made up stuff. And he says, no, listen to it again. And he tells the gospel through song. And he talks about how it's the end of the beginning. And as we move forward, we love our tradition. But like the letter I wrote in the altar, it is very interesting that as we look back on our history, on the things we have done as a church, as we look back at our wonderful 100 years of history, the things we do, the letter I put in there, the things we do are for the future. And so let's always remember moving forward what Jesus wants us to do, how we grow as a church. How are you shaking things up? I call upon you guys to tell, that bring neighbors, bring a friend every month, bring somebody new to worship, somebody who has to hear the good news. So, I want you to remember that this is the this is the way that we are supposed to act and operate as a congregation. How God leads us, how the Holy Spirit leads us, through song, through puppets, whatever it might be. Plug in. Plug in because God came God sent his son Jesus for you and for me. And because of that, we are blood-bought sons and daughters of the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. Let us make sure our praises are going to him. In Jesus' name.